Hello, welcome. I'm Dave. And I'm Louise. We live aboard a narrowboat called Changing Pace. What you're watching at the moment looks like bow cam, and you're not wrong. It's uh, obviously speeded up. First we don't pass more boats that quickly. We don't move that quickly anyway. This is very different for us, this footage, and that's because we lost one of our hard drives. You hear of boat bloggers losing their hard drives. Uh, Amy and Wes from Boat Time UK, Lisa and Glenn from A Life Full of Meaning, and we are of no exception. We lost the back camera footage. We have some of the side action. This is very different editing to what I normally do do. Do do. Uh, sorry. Do 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 do. Generally, I will uh, montage or collate three or four clips because for me, it's more interesting, it's more creative, it's a different viewpoint. And quite frankly, I like it. The difference with this footage is that you've seen the whole journey, not just clips. So you see from the beginning of Gothersley right up to Kimber from the bow camera point of view. But generally, we don't show you the whole journey. So this is particularly different footage from us. And it might be to your liking or not, but it is an alternative viewpoint. We're coming up to an aqueduct, I believe. Um, this aqueduct, it was a nice aqueduct, but actually it was only an A road under it. This is just beautiful English countryside. Yeah, we're actually on his way down to Kimver. Which is on? The Stafford and Worcestershire Canal. It's uh, This is a new waterway for us at the time. It was a beautiful sunny day. We're coming up to the T-junction, which is the Stoughton Junction. Yes. So if we were to go left here at these bushes, we would go up towards Stourport. It's yes. a flight of locks. They have absolutely beautiful, breathtaking waterfalls. Yeah. It's a very scenic it, path to take. Yeah, heads up into the bottom of Birmingham. But it's not the way we're going today. Today yeah. we're going straight on and we're going to go past Dupony Visitors Moorings, the um, drinking water facilities first. Yes. And then through Stupony Lock. Well, I mean, this, this Stupony just comes out of nowhere. You go from countryside to a, a little village. It's a busy little village. It is. It's actually a, a busy junction. There's a road junction, the, the road from Stour Bridge and Stour Port. So what I just did there is I just went past the lock. I was setting the lock for Dave to come into it. And I just went through to check that there was no boats coming. As it happened, there were no boats coming. Lou's fascination with whirlpools here. I thought it was a sink pool. Yeah, it's, it's where the, when you open the paddles, the ground paddles, it's... Uh, the drag of the water into, into the, the lock, lock itself yeah. uh, creates a whirlpool. Um, and if there's anything floating, it's quite fascinating to watch. I, I, <laughs> I am, I can't, I, everybody would get mesmerised by it. So or boaters, anyway, <laughs> I think. I think it's quite fascinating. The Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal is a, as you can see from the lock, is a, it's a narrow gauge canal. Wasn't it one of the earliest canals it linked up uh, Worcester and Birmingham? I think so, yeah. It was uh, it 1770 like something or other. Yeah. It opened in 1772. It runs softly through the West Midlands countryside. It skirts around the edges of Birmingham without ever truly becoming urban. And it is 46 miles long with 43 locks. It carried commercial trade from Staffordshire Potteries southwards through to Gloucester and indeed Bristol and trade from the Black Country northward to the Potteries by the junction of the Birmingham Canal. It went into a decline 
around 1815 when the newly opened Worcester and Birmingham Canal came into play. They provided a more direct route between Birmingham and Bristol. Again, a further setback when Birmingham and Liverpool Junction Canal opened with the newer routes from Chester to Merseyside in 1830. However, the Staffordshire and Worcester Canal has been in play and independent and not sold off to the railway companies right up until 1948. This lock that we are working is opposite Stupony Wharf. Uh, the Canal Toll House was established early on in the 19th century. It's very distinctive with its octagonal shape. It's now a Grade 2 listed building as of 1987. I can tell you that the Stupony Wharf was a busy wharf. Barges came in and they were weighed in the water and charged accordingly in various journeys north and south. So that's me going down in the world. Where and you should be. Yeah, it's quite a deep lock this one as well. How, how deep is it Dave? Oh nearly 10 foot. I think at this point the water levels are level. From the level, the water inside the lock is the same level as the water outside the lock. No amount of pushing of the gates, should them levels not be level, is going to open the gate. But obviously, because they are level, the gate's opened with ease. I mean, I'm not sure how many more times I could put the word level into that paragraph. <laughs> I mean, quite a few. Yeah. Quite level, weren't it? No, the one once the water pressure equalizes, uh, the gates are quite easy to swing. That's open. what I meant. Yes. Not level, is it? Water Equal. pressure. Water pressure. Nothing to do with levels. It is to do with levels because what if the levels aren't the same? The you've, pressure you've is got, different either got, side of the gate. Yeah, you've got you've got water pressure pressing on the gate, so you can't open them. That's how locks work. Well, they've been in existence for what three three hundred years now yeah. so you can see how how narrow the canal is exiting well, certainly the that lock. section yeah and then under this is actually a new bridge yes and you can always tell a new bridge because it has an a after the number yes well on it, yes they do. On, on most on most of on them. most canals they they have an A if it's a newer bridge than when all the bridges got mapped out. Yes. That that pause there was Dave getting oh so that was me getting back on the boat, and now we've gone into fast forward mode again. And that's the boat with the gentleman who helped you on the lock. Indeed. So he was he was quite away away from the lock, which caused the confusion. So as you can see, the people walking on the towpath. But obviously, they're not walking at 40 miles an hour. We're just about keeping pace, so, you know, three, four, four mile an hour is about normal. Here we have a, a very tiny tunnel. I do think we actually put our lamp on. Yes. I'm not sure it was worth the flick of the switch. And it's a blind corner as well. Yeah. So we certainly did horn it. Uh, just to announce our arrival at our end, should we have heard a horn in return, we would have known that there was a boat coming from the other end and therefore wouldn't have entered the tunnel. But as we didn't hear anything, we just sort of sauntered on through. Yeah. It was made out of um, rock. It's, it was yun out of the rock. Uh, it out was, of the rock. It was what? Yun made. You what? And where, where, what on earth is the word yoon? It's another way for made. What does you mean? Uh, where have you dug it from? I don't know, from the depths. From the depths of despair, yoon. Yoon, yes. I'm going to try and get that in a word of the week. Drop that down somewhere. Ah, this is a lovely place to moor this. It's yes. absolutely perfect for solar panels. And it's just before the lock. It's officially not a mooring, 
but the local people know about it. Yeah, and it's absolutely fantastic solars here. It's it's not only just solars; it's a fantastic view. It is a so yeah, lovely. that's breathtaking, isn't it? Yeah. Really. So this is a private residence here, and they have their own pet robin. <laughs> it is marvelous. You know what they say about robins, don't you? They say it's a loved one, isn't it? They say it's the loved one that you've lost is watching over you. So it's always quite not oh yeah, too fast for me, I can't keep up with him. It's a loved one watching over you. Another mesmerizing moment for me. Look into my eyes, look into my eyes. Don't look round my eyes, look into my eyes. <laughs> Hit the like button. Hit the like button. <laughs> this was gurgling, it was such a weird gurgle. And obviously there was a cobweb there, but the cobweb wasn't gurgling. It was just the gurgle from the paddle. Yeah. As, as normal, I were hanging about rather than going into the side of the canal. And I do like to practice holding the boat in the middle of the canal. Sometimes when it's windy, it's a, it's a bit of a challenge. But Well, sometimes they actually say... You should let the boat flow and not manoeuvre it until it's required. Because you're expelling, obviously, diesel and energy. Uh -huh. It depends on which train of thought you go with. Oh, look, a little bit of a montage there. You're welcome, everyone. And the scratches on the side of the boat. <laughs> we got the boat blackened and it is absolutely... Trashed. Yeah, now it is. We should have got the boat blackened at the end of the adventure. But unfortunately, somebody said to me, oh, look, your boat's scratching. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. I went, oh, no, don't apologise. That means your boat is used. Yeah. And she is. She is. She is. We use her. We, we, we try not to abuse her. Uh, but inadvertently, I think it happens. Yeah. And also, we don't have bow thrusters. No. That does make life harder. It does. Although maybe that makes us more used to driving in snow, so to speak. Yes. Ah, look at this. It's beautiful. Unusual garden gates. I think every vlog has ever mentioned them gates. And <laughs> the fact that the garden is absolutely pristine and they have their own private moorings. Yeah. They say your soul is generally happier around water. I think it works for me. I'm not a big swimmer though, and I would never swim in the canal. No. We're off again. Yay, no boat waiting to go in. So I'm coming up to, at this point in time, there was a festival on in the field. You can't see it, but it's over to the back, back right of the picture as we speak. And you could hear the music in the background. It was uh, cool. It was cool. It was cool. And we thought that these are actually permit holder people moored here. So they pay to more, what they call that? Long-term Long -term linear moorings. Long-term linear moorings. We thought they were part of the festival, but they're not. Mm -hmm. They they pay to stay here. And, and th there's a very, very big mix of boats down down here. Very collective. So you'll see some cruisers there, uh, narrow boats of all descriptions and also of all expense. Yeah, new boats. Restored boats, boats TLC and... boats. Oh, we're here. We're here. We're, we've arrived at Kimva. Welcome to Kimva. <laughs> One of the locals who I spoke to yesterday says, Maybe you do if you speak to any of them, don't call it Caniva. <laughs> so they get really offended. Oops. Then nice. four locks. Four locks, yes. One tiny tunnel. Very tiny tunnel. And that. one small junction. Yes, and you've used your new windless holder. £7.50 well spent, I think. But we're going to go down the lock. I think the Cratch Man knows we're coming. And we're just going to moor up just below this lock. 
if you have any comments with regards to the different style of this footage do leave them below uh, if you haven't already please consider subscribing please give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed what you've seen and ring the bell for future notifications we will see you next time don't forget next time we will still have lost footage though so it won't be our normal format look after yourselves stay safe take care until next time bye, bye. you're not waving dave wave <laughs> fool <laughs>